He's going to be picking up the Zaya, but he's got some fantastic game. Can't wait to see if he brings out Widowmaker, Tracer, or McCree again. His hit scan is pretty insurmountable in terms of our talent pool here in Europe. But for now, just going to be picking up that Zaya again. And last week, Jaws, he seems a little bit off balance when he was up against one point. Some very questionable Graviton surges, and Tech was kind of getting the better of him. That he was. And it wasn't even the pressure coming out from Coasty at that point, because you just want to set up the rest of your team, or at least Spectre wants to set up Lol Surge for these massive charges, uh, well, massive amount of ult charge that you can get off those Graviton Surges, just swinging in. Barbecue already taken out Aphox. Angry Titans beating on the rotation. Half of them are going to run to the point, half of them all the way back to their spawn. Barbecue does lose his mech, though, but with Lol Surge going down, should be an easy fight for Shoes Money Crew now. They're going to plant themselves on the point and find the first cap. Barbecue, they got super aggressive to try and get an angle onto Aphox. He did trade his mech for it, but I feel like that trade really was in his favor because it meant that JK LOL could be a lot more aggressive compared to LOLSish because there was no availability of the Discord orb coming through from Aphox, which means that on the side that has the, uh, on the, side that has the Zenyatta, you can get far more aggressive. And not only is uh, it a trade where Zenyatta's gone, but also you kind of get to keep the Diva. Diva doesn't suffer from damage drop off from a Bunny Blaster, so it can still do a significant amount of damage. Put down some shield pressure, even from long range, which you usually wouldn't have because Diva suffers majorly from damage fall off. While in the mech with the fusion cannons, they have very nasty drop off, which can mean that shield pressure from a long range isn't quite as reliable as you'd like. Unfortunately, maybe someone's dropped off the map. Not entirely sure. We are jumping into a brief pause, so I do apologize for that, but we shouldn't be too long getting back into the game. Now, Angry Titans, like we mentioned before, going a little bit off balance when it came to facing up Coasty on the main tank. And Coasty wasn't really, it wasn't really a shining star coming into contenders. He really didn't get massive shatters. He was always in the front line. It was very much the overaggression that piled on top of him. It felt like now he has flipped that around completely, stepping into the roster not 12 hours before their match and just taking Angry Titans and just taking them to the cleaners. Well, as a coach, you can definitely know that he has the leadership role and the respect to be a good main caller for that team if they are lacking in that somewhat. So what Costi says goes, and that really works out when you are an aggressive Reinhardt who demands resources. Yeah, we're going to jump to a quick break, guys. Do not go anywhere. It's AT versus Shoes Money Crew. We'll be right back.
Hey guys, welcome back. Apologies for the brief pause, but we are into the game, of course. She's money crew do currently have control of the point, and Barbecue will have reclaimed his mech after trading it for a fox in the previous fight. As you can see, JK Lol here is getting a little bit aggressive, but we'll see some room to lolsish moving forward with a vanilla speed boost from Aluso. Yet to use that amp, but can use it to force an engagement soon, potentially. They see a vulnerability in the formation of Shoes Money Crew. Oh, Losa's shield's gonna get pressured out a whole bunch. Shoes Money Crew, they have got the shadow, they've got trance, and Obling has got that uh, rally coming online fairly soon. Instantly is Obling gonna use that as soon as he gets online. Losa's under a huge amount of pressure. It was actually pushed in amongst Shoes Money Crew, but JK Lol is gonna go down as well. As soon as they saw their backs were turned, Angry Tides do strike. Grab it on surge onto the side of the wall. Gustav. He's going to take out Fat and Spectral. Uh, he's going to go down as well. Nice cleanup from Shoes Money Crew. They do expend on ult. Actually, JKL used his Earth Shadow as well in that fight. Not entirely sure where it went, but they still managed to get it. Possibly killed or stunned out of that. But speaking of stuns, I've got to give credit to Obling for getting that stun to Loltish once he was booped in. The follow-up with that allowed was so good. Not only that, it meant Loltish couldn't swing and get that all-important Shadow ready. Because, of course, the Shadow's now available, but he couldn't use it with about 100 health left. That would have been too risky an investment for him. Mouse for now, is just going to be a rotating front line. Can use his shield to get himself some additional energy, but he may decide to save it. Now he will use that personal barrier in there to grab. Grab from Spectral, self drugs going to come in. Defensive one's being used as well. Self-destruct from Emil finds two, though. JK Low on Mouse by the dust. Lolsish protecting the rest of his team with his barrier. Should be able to clean up the rest of the team fight. Barbecue trying to find something. But with 82%, that's ticking up even further as they do in stagger and die on the point. Does mean Shoes Money Crew really only need to win one fight now. Barbecue's usage error for defensive self structure as well did force out Fat Sound Barrier, so that's no longer going to be available to try and counter out any aggression that Gustav may look for with the overshielding of his own. But of course, Aphox can try and counter that out with a transcendence, which will mean that potentially Angry Titans here are going to have a huge engagement advantage because Oki can use Rally to give that stacking armor to Lol, so she'll allow him to get incredibly aggressive and put himself in a position where he's not so worried about JK Lol's shield mitigating an incoming Earth Shadow. For now, though, concede some ground, try and play around the corners here, making sure his shield isn't what? taking too much. Much damage, but Aphox picked again. He's already dead through the shield. He went down so quickly. There's the rally. Oh, oh my four. goodness. That's four people on the floor. The B is going to save them for the, just the meantime. JK Lol receives an armor pack as well. So he is still in the fight. He gets booted straight on top and into the grab. And Lost is just swinging on in. He can get a couple of kills of his own. It's an even trade ish as Lost just ends up going down as well. But with three members dead and a transcendence going off, Shoes Money Crew really don't have much to claim to this fight really. Fat is also going to fall at the end. Gustav going to go down. Emil finds three. A desperation grab was thrown out by Maus. Maybe he thought they could salvage the rest of the fight. And now Angry Titans are in the driving seat. Spectral now on a grab per fight. His generation is pretty unparalleled at the moment. Maus also threw one out there, but not to a huge amount of success. Still allowed for Angry Titans to get the follow-up they wanted. And of course, because A Fox was picked off early, didn't get to use that transcendence. So that's now available if JK Lol can hit a big shadow and potentially he's going to be looking to catch Aphox in there. There will be some old tracking going on. They know Aphox is going to have that available. That's why it was a primary target, but he cannot afford to catch a fire strike in this fight. Shoes money crew, if they can win this, they may take the round. Bag retires, we're in the same position with 83%. Could use that speed boost to rush in. It's going to get back with the sound barrier. That shadow hits one. At least gets Spectral down and he actually goes down also. JK Lol falls. There's a one for one trade. Maus is going to get targeted out so he can't provide shields to the rest of his team. Barbecue self-destruct kills Aphox. Lolsish almost get punted off the edge, but he manages to stay on ever so slightly. A self-destruct from Emil to cause the re-mech. Uh, re overtime is ticking through now. And now we've got to see JK Lol come back into the fight. They've got to stay on the point, but overtime's going to start ticking through. But Spectral is down on that tracer. He had to come back in. He had to get back to the point quickly, so choosing the tracer with a smart idea. Oh, a shadow a coming slam. through from Lolsish. Three hit the ground and go back to spawn. Lolsish ends up falling, but it should be enough for Angry Titan to secure the points. Loss is just doing so much damage. Two shadows, one fight, no problems. Maus is on the tracer now, trying to stall for a bit of extra time, but everybody's just getting staggered out. Spectral kills him off eventually, an AT secure market. Great clutch turnaround there from Lolsish. Not only managing to get the solo shadow onto Maus, who was one of his primary targets. You've heard it a load in the Overwatch League about what happens when you lose a Zarya and he's through three battles. You're very unlikely to win that one out. And that's the same thing that went through JK Lol's head as well. He got the solo Spe shadow onto Spectral. And there was some good follow-up there from Shoes Money Crew who managed to take him down even through the transcendence of Aphox. Unfortunately for them, they just could not secure the kills fast enough while Aphox was using that transcendence. So we saw Angry Titans eventually able to brawl that one out. Emil keeping very safe, hiding within the exploding mech so he couldn't take advantage of his 150 HP body and quickly dispatch him. Control center. 
Both teams running out the same comp again. Surprise, surprise. No May. We've seen a little bit of Angry Titans May over the last uh, couple of weeks, and a little bit in Season 3 as well, but it's not rearing its head just yet. Barbecue eating up a fire strike, going to try and alleviate some pressure from his team. Of course, that can pass through the shield. It's one of the main offensive tools of the 3 3 composition. Ooh. And both of our teams currently posturing for position. That's a speed boost right into the back. They want to play aggressive, they want to take advantage of Angry Titans. Just making sure they uh, are constantly on the back foot. And that's what Shoes Money to Crew are doing a good job of thus far. Although JK Lowell going a little bit low, has to back off. And now Aphox punishing his shield in the front line. He's going to go down rather swiftly as Lowell is just swinging into him past his shield. The rest of Shoes Money Crew are going to fall as well. You saw the second that that projected barrier came out onto JK Lowell and dissipated. Angry Titans were all over that Reinhardt. He had nothing to protect him thereafter and was quickly destroyed. But Shoes Money Crew having a look at their strategy here it appears to be to pressure Aphox a lot. He's been the first pick twice now throughout two fights on Night Market and you saw the same thing there with a deep speed boost into the enemy back line but Angry Titans throughout that prolonged fight have got themselves quite a few ultimates ready to go and two waiting in the wings. Fat and Erky will not take long to generate those. I want to see Lolsish use his Earth Shadow first but no, it will be the Graviton Surge. Grav's going to come in. Barbecue is an inch away of actually eating that one up. Emil's going to use that self-destruct also. I don't think that's necessary. Cleaning up the Baby Diva. The rest of Shoes Money Crew are going to go reset back to their sport. Potentially the call there was to use the self-destruct on the Graviton Surge, thought they'd get more people inside, but Barbecue there got an awkward body block, I believe, was looking to try and tank some damage instead, get those support ultimates ready to go, and now Angry Titans, we're going to be on the back foot without so much offensive tool. Lolsish going to have to try and clutch this one out with the Earth Shadow. Swift re-engage though, Lolsish hiding around this main pillar, doesn't want to get shattered himself, of course. Both rallies being used as well. Graviton Surge what gets thrown stun. in right into the mech of a meal. But one kill already goes the way of Shoes Money Crew. Lovesish going down now means Maus can posture around this point, forcing out the Transcenders from Aphox. Now Maus can just farm the back line. There's no one to really stop him. He's already up to 50% all the way to another grab. A beat is going to come through from AT to see them through the rest of the fight and actually forces out Transcenders from Slur. Maus trying to get that grab back. It was eaten by Emil beforehand, but now Lovesish looking for a slam. Maus is dead. Slam hits the back line. He moves past JK Lol shield the rest of his team didn't say it coming that beat was worthwhile from fat saw them in the fight and they didn't lose the point either Emil there with a major clutch factor eating up that graviton surge meant that there was no way the angry titans were going to be run over by shoes money crew after they lost lolsish to a great stun coming through from opaline and now shoes money crew they've expended so much mouse is going to have another graviton ready to go but they're going to have to follow up with JK Lol and opaline just swinging in they've been grabbed already they're going to have to run into the giganti combo as well the beat's going to come out just to try and make sure they survive, but no, they can't touch the point. It looked like the brick was on it, but it wasn't enough. Angry Titans definitively securing Li Zhang. Seems like they definitely found their flow a little bit better here going up against Shu's Money Crew. They're really waxing and waning with the ebb and flow. The tides of 3-3 three, three, as we've seen so often over the past few months. Definitely got a good feeling for that. I imagine that after last week, Coach Optidoc sat everyone down and was like, listen. One point was a mess, <laughs> and you also were, but it's fixed the issues now. Feels like Lolsish is a lot more confident with how he's playing with his team. That David versus Goliath matchup. Going the way of Goliath to start off with. Lolsish and Angry Titans, 1-0 up in the series. We're going to jump to a quick break, though, guys. Do not go anywhere. Map number two coming up soon.
Hey guys, welcome back. Kings Row coming up very soon. This is 80 versus Shoes Mighty Crew. If you've only just joined us, 1-0 up right now for a T. Seems like the team house working out pretty well for them as well. That must give them such a mental boon coming into this series. Yeah, it can be very tough when you're playing online from a remote location without your team. It can feel very isolating. Sometimes the comms go quiet. You've all felt it in your competitive games. Obviously, in professional teams, it works out a little bit better. But when things start to go wrong, you start to go a little bit quiet. You don't really want to talk as much. But just being able to turn around and be like, it's okay, buddy. Like, <laughs> it's okay. It's cool. Everything's going to be fine. We lost that fight, but our mental is back. And of course, it also means they can all crowd around and have a talk with Coach Opti. And I, I imagine that's also very good for Coach Opti that he can have those more personal group discussions with people. This instant impact too. Of course, it is the same thing online, yes, but someone speaking to your ear is very different to someone actually like looking you in the eyes and then talking about what's wrong. And yeah, you get like that pack mentality as well. Exactly. You feel so much more like a team. High fives all round. High fives and fist bumps. And all the above. Fist <laughs> bumps are more hygienic, I believe. So it's probably a few of yeah. those. Don't want to get ill, of course. C Chris Bucket actually gave some advice for people who don't want to get ill at uh, things like land parties. Give everyone fist bumps instead of shaking hands or high fives. There you go. Take that to your lands. Yeah. That you're going to visit this stay, year. Stay safe. Stay safe, guys. Don't get ill when you go to Atlantic Showdown. Oh, it's or Pacific Showdown. My goodness. Depending on where you're located. That is my... One of my fears when going to events, regardless if I'm casting or not, just getting ill. Because then you have to then travel home, and then you feel the worst, and then you get home, and it's like, wow, I enjoyed that experience, but now I'm ill for four days. This is great. Well, right now, Angry Titans certainly are looking sick, and I feel that Spectral really has upped his Graviton usage. Like, he has got a few solo grabs, but in 3-3, three, three, the solo grab can often work out if you can just isolate and destroy one person, because you're never really going to be losing that 5v6 if you've got the drop on them. It can kind of mess up your ultimate economy, but if you're winning, if you're generating fight, if you're generating Gravitons at the kind of pace that Spectral is, you don't really have to worry about it as much. It's a little bit ridiculous. Mouse going extremely low already, by the way. Spectral and uh, Aphox doing a whole bunch of damage. JKLR was going to push around this point. Remember, JKLR wants to play aggro here. They've seen what Colsty can do to Angry Titans. They can rattle the mental. And now Lawson is going to start moving forward. Has been given that projected barrier, so this could be the moment. An <gasps> early boot, Oh, though. no. You see that? As soon as that barrier went down, Fat had his finger over the E keys. <laughs> going to amp it up, run straight at JK LOL. It's exactly what they did. They managed to find the kill. Oh, this could be a brutal stagger. Oh, AFOX like, nope, mine, mine. Give me the kill. <laughs> he, he wants those Winston Lab stats. Won't be getting them this time. The mill's going to pick up his counterpart in barbecue. And right now, Angry Titan's looking pretty in terms of their ultimates. They do have a significant 54% advantage towards that Earth Shadow. So now Lolsish can get incredibly aggressive. I want to see if we're going to see Fat continue to play up on high ground where he can get those boops onto JK LOL. Or if he's going to play a little bit more close to the ground, play with Lolsish and like, try and facilitate that incoming Earth Shadow and that circumvention of the enemy shield. Yeah, you can see the bubbles. JK Lol knows that it could happen again, so he's paying a little bit farther back. Has to wait for the call that Mouse is going to use that bubble on him, of course. And watching out for Lolsus' shadow. They've got to know he's had it for a long time at this point. Barbecue's mech goes extremely low also, and now they're going aggressive. See, instantly backing off, Lolsus did as soon as that shield did go up. And now they can play aggro because they know they have the bubble advantage. JK Lol's shield's almost broken, but here Angry Titans playing for time is exactly what they need. They don't really need to win this fight right now. Some of the Shoes Money crew are not on the point. But over the course of this fight, Shoes Money crew built up oh, a load of ultimates. That's not where you right want on the, the lamp post. <laughs> Oh, that ain't dear. the light of life. That's not what you want to see. And that's well, so bad. They traded grabs, okay, but the shadow <laughs> came down from Lolsish. Self destruct gonna get launched in. That sound barrier made sure that Barbecue survived, but JK Lol unfortunately got taken out from Shoes Money Crew. And now Barbecue's gonna get staggered again. Oh no, maybe not. A Fox delivers a few orbs to the face. Both grabs whiffed, yes, but that shatter what made the fight worth it for AT. Now it's going to rename to Moth. Apparently he's very attracted to those lights. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And now we're going to see that Aphox and Slur are both going to be pretty free to use these transcendences. They don't have to use them to answer incoming grabs, but you've got to be careful because you've got to make sure that you're tracking Spectral, the amount of damage that he's doing. doesn't matter if you have the last one eaten, and that's going to be a very aggressive trance from Slur right there all over Spectral. Yeah, they know exactly what's happening with the Graviton Surge. They know they don't have one just yet. Shadow's going to come through. Big does slam. hit one at the back, but instantly that B gets laying down from nowhere. Fat Drop from the skies, make sure six people have received the beat so they can survive the fight. Another grab's earned by Spectre and they dive straight on in. No transcendence to save you now. Another grab comes out from Mouth, but now they need to pump the damage in. Spectre survives just for the moment from that armor pack from the brick. Even longer now as the rally's coming out. Slur 
quickly delivers his quick death, though, with a couple of orbs to the face. Now, AT have to play more cautiously as they don't have the spawn advantage. Barbecue Vat had some beautiful positioning around the back. He was actually forcing a load of damage into Lolsish, which meant that Lolsish was not in a position where he could swing into that Graviton Surge and do all the damage that was required. JK Lol is taking point. He may, may secure a tick here. He will get it. 60 seconds remain. They've got a tick on the point. They're jumping into the hotel. AT coming out on top to start off with. His mouse ends up going down. Now JK Lol playing so scared. The shadow's going to hit one, but look at the defense of AT just standing firm on the pe uh, on the point to make sure they don't go down. Spectral finds some revenge as he get manages to kill JK Lol. And now AT running through Shoom's money crew. 20 seconds now remain, and they are forced right back to their spawn. Super well placed vanilla self destruct right there. And Spectral can now try, try and help Lolsis generate another Earth Shadow after uses this one by using his own Graviton Surge. Shoes Money Crew, they're low on resources, Jaws, they're only going to have that all-important transcendence, but he's going to have to save it to try and deal with one of these offensive ultimates. Lolsius could lay down oh. the shadow first. He gets oh, booped up into the air. Straight up stunned as well. And still Spectral holding onto that grab. It comes out in the end and Slur reacts with his own transcendence. Opening gets pinned through the transcendence and the grab. However, and he ends up going down. Slur, the mad lad in the back line, manages to take out Lolsius, making it a one-for-one. -one. And now Spectral's going to fall. That's a main damage source for Angry Titans gone. But still, Shoes Money Crew aren't accruing that percentage. They're still going to beat. Angry Titans still want to fight on this point. Emil didn't receive it, however, as he was remecking. So only the Baby Diva form was able to actually get that sound barrier. But a Transcendence now to see them on point. A grab is going to meet them as Lolsis tries to get back to his team in time, trying to defend them. And JK Lowe ends up going down. Still a man disadvantage for AT as they just stagger themselves onto this point. Spectral's even now on the Doom Fist. And now they've got to remain on the point though for Shoes Money Crew. They haven't got their second tick yet, but Angry Titans, they're still here. They're still brawling. And that's just going to hide out. Nope, no, no. Not for long though. I'm sure. Big headshot. <laughs> I'm sure Mouse is very familiar with that <laughs> lamppost now. He, he's getting very familiar with it. Barbecue gonna just get his mech back here through the passive charge. We'll stick on the cart for the safety it provides. And you can see both of the Reinhardts there had very similar ideas of what they wanted to do looking at an enemy Graviton. They both went to pin out the Brigitas because you know that you can eliminate the Brigitte incredibly easily with that 300 burst damage if they haven't used Rally recently because that means that they will not get over 300 health. It's an instant elimination even through the healing of Transcendence. Mao's gonna be lobbing out those mortars trying to catch up on that Graviton Surge charge. He's so far ahead of Spectral right now. This could be a great boon for Shoes Money Crew to keep momentum in their favor. There's the speed boost. That's self-destruct coming in as well. Someone's going to have to block it. JK Lol just does that. However, Lolsish manages to get the wraparound pin to remove JK Lol from the rest of Shoes Money Crew. Hey, Fox falls, yes. But that rally is going to make sure Angry Titans win that engagement. It's going to be a traded investment there. Rally and self-destruct for the Earth Shatter. Not a huge amount of use from that shield there from Spectral, but he does have the energy to try and lob in these mortars, and we'll get a little bit more from Lolsish's body blocking right there. Look at the aggression here. Again, he's not done, but he's still blocks. got it. It doesn't matter, though. Beat's going to come through. Lolsish still managed to get a couple people on the ground, but there was no follow-up from Angry Titans. They were already half on the retreat. Gustav finds a nice boot kill onto Fat and Spectral just dying on the car now. Yeah, kind of a little breakdown in communication there. It looked like Fat trying to speed everyone out for that disengage after Gustav just went for the very much more telegraphed. Let's just speed forward and we'll try and overwhelm Lolsish. It's kind of weird that Lolsish still managed to hit that Shatter even though he was up in the air for an extended period. Should have been time to prepare some shields to put in his way, though it wasn't enough to stop the torrent of Shoes Money Crew just driving into the Angry Titans core. And they're now about one fight away from having completed second. Self-destruct in the back line. Does manage to find Erky. And even a grab being thrown out by AT to try and secure the fight. Slur healing everybody up through that transcendence. Now the beat from Angry Titans in response to make sure they can't get overwhelmed in the front line. JK Lol very near to that shatter. Lolsis isn't quite far behind him though. Self-destruct launched up in the air. Doesn't quite find anything. Actually forces a transcendence out from AFOX. But now JK Lol is missing out on so much shield strength. And we can see Lolsis has that shatter ready to go. Shoes money crew though. They've got to disengage. They're under man for this fight jaws and 18 seconds remain we've got to try and get a quick regroup you can see that charging everyone forward will be good staff for emil he's sticking on the payload doesn't want to allow any c9s in the background while angry titans have their chance here to seal up the map it's going to be earth shatter and graviton surge versus for Kerbal. for both teams they're going to jump straight on it the graviton surge just pulled early for spectra and it was a good one the shatter in the background as well lost finds two on the ground emil eats the graviton surge and mouse too so there's two massive game winning ultimates out of the way for shoes money crew jakey lol still manages to find spectra in the background with a flame strike but they are not out of this fight just yet as they use that rally to surge themselves forward 
Oh my goodness, Losey's tried to get out of that fight ASAP. He was actually stunned up by the Brig Smash. Shoes Money Crew, regardless of their grab getting eaten, still managed to win the fight. They're channeling their inner Bazooka Puppies jaws. The overtime warriors right now are Shoes Money Crew, but they're going to have even less time for this third and final point. And not only that, Angry Titan is now going to have the advantage in terms of attrition. We're going to be so close to their spawn in this third point. One minute and 13 remains for Shoes Money Crew. They're going to be a little bit low on tools unless Mouse can hit a few good mortars, get this Graviton Surge ready to go. He's got such an advantage over Spectral, though. Apox may have to use that Transcendence to answer this. Wow, Opening's already dead, though. That could be a big boot. That is a very... Oh, that is a big boot, indeed. Good stuff. Managed to find Erky. He puts him down the well. Well, it's not a well, really. It's a factory at that. Spectral still 33% away from actually getting a grab online of his own. Mouse has got his ready and raring to go. Look at the duel here between the Divas 4 the High Ground Barbecue. Not having a great time of this, but he can almost get that self-destruct. We'll get the repair pack, though. That's now not available for JK Lol. He can be incredibly easily targeted. Grab comes out. Three people caught up. That pin did no damage as it was healed through. The Shadow goes straight into Lotus's shield as they launch out the self-destruct as well. Of course he was going to hold shield, but they still managed to kill off Spectral. That is going to fall as well. Losey's dying on the payload to buy as much time as feasibly possible. 15 seconds remain, but AT might just have another fight. They've got a couple of ults to work with. And not only that, Shoes Money Crew expended so much to try and make that one work. After three tanker ultimates didn't net them any kills, they had to go on forward with the Sand Barrier of Gustav. Look at this very aggressive use of the Graviton They're Surge. right in the spawn! Mouse is going to get killed by just a melee from Spectral. Perfect play from AT to hold Shoes Money Crew, pay for the over-aggression. A Shadow's going to hit one person in the front line, but Barbecue quickly self-rights himself. Actually, D-Mex, unfortunately, tries to buy some more time on the payload, but it's not going to be enough. Gustav is going to go down as well. The rally from Erky should just seal the deal. AT managed to halt Shoes Money Crew a couple of meters away from third point. <sighs> for Sir Excitation there, Shoes Money Crew, they got a little bit too... Well, brazen. They were up in the spawn of Angry Titans. We're like, okay, you want to get aggressive? You want to get aggressive? Yeah, you can, can just stay here. Just grab you here if you want. And, and they're right next to where they have the not only the invincibility, but the huge healing that the respawn room offers. And that meant that they could rotate out if they took too much damage in that particular instance. It was not going to be a fight that Shoes Money Crew could really win. It was more just like posturing and trying to scare Angry Titans, it would appear. Have a look at the foundry there. Definitely not a well. It's a pit. I, I'm pretty sure there's actually an Omnic City of some kind. Are they little houses then? I thought they were just crates. Uh, I, I believe that the, uh, the law here is that the Londoners want the Omnics to stay underground in places such as that foundry. Oh, that's not very nice. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not nice people in the future. We I'm are, afraid. though. Yeah. Oh, in the, oh, in the future. Don't, don't worry, yeah. Jaws and I, we're lovely. Yeah, we're lovely N people. Nothing like the 2060s Britons. <sighs> Goddamn 2060 Londoners. Yeah, young kids. Goddamn it, young whippersnappers. <laughs> We'd be long dead, but... Well, that's that, neither here nor there. Well, 2060. Oh, I thought you meant 26, like 2600, so like no, 600 years in the like, 26, I, I hope I'm alive in 2060. <laughs> Unless you've got some severely unhealthy life practices. <laughs> I was thinking about just going out on some sick snowboarding so, trip. So that, that's a yikes. Has someone told you when you're going to die? <laughs> a couple of years ago, visited to one of those old circus. Got my palm red. <laughs> you're going to die in 2059. Just, just have some tea leaves there. Yeah. Why not? Well, Angry Titan's going to have red for tea leaves, and their fortunes say that they have a really good win condition. Two points taken and 63.71 meters will grant them Ooh. match point here. That was value shields and spectral, by the way. Bubbled himself and Lolsish, and both ate a flame strike. That's 40 pretty charge nice to start off with. Him. And Mouse is like, please, I need the same treatment. I need all. I need charge so I can build ult fast. Not as fast as spectral, of course. It's Honestly, award-winning Graviton Surge charge time. Barbecue for an extremely low. Look, 100% already. They're just carving through Mouse and Opling. JK Law didn't really stand a chance as soon as his other tanks ended up going down. <laughs> I was going to say, he didn't really aim properly. He was just kind of like jumping around, right-click. And they managed to find the quick team kill. And look at this time bank they're going to get as well. Harry. Seemed like there was a bit of a split push there for Angry Titans, varying their playstyle from what they usually do. Usually it all sort of like roll into one target, such as an enemy Reinhardt. But what we actually saw was a bit of a feint for Angry Titans. They looked like they were all going into JK Lol, And that forced JK Lol to move backwards. But at the same time, Shoes Money Crew was sort of caught out, opening and Mao's out on their own. And then Angry Titans went for a full diversion where they went to attack not only JK Lol, but Mao's and Opling as well, and there just wasn't enough healing to deal with a multiple pronged approach that Angry Titans were offering there. Luckily, Shoes Money Crew did get good spawn, so they can hold very aggressively in this archway and try and create micro chokes around either side of that payload as it moves on through. 
Yeah, they're going to have to use that bookshopper's cover as well. Not quite so much offling. Uh-oh. Yeah, JK Lol gets run down as well. See Logstitch in the middle of that fight, by the way. He's just holding shield, just cutting off a lot of the healing that was coming through from the Brig, of course, and then from the Lucio as well. Can't obviously apply Discord orbs either. Uh, that's kind of frustrating past shield. So, Angry Titans, good job. Second fight, one in a row. Four minutes and 50 seconds to roll through the streets phase. Shoes Money Crew, they need to find something to stick. But look at the ult bank, really. And the ult bank advantage for AT right now. And talking about interrupting Lucio Aurus as well, if you can get that shield around an enemy Reinhardt and you're, they're trying to disengage, that will actually count, cancel out the speed boost. So that they then are definitely deep within your enemy team. Spectral does have a Graviton Surge ready to go. Mouse is very far behind. It's going to come down to Barbecue here to try and eat it, but he's seen that. Gra seen the he saw the Matrix instantly. He knew he could just press the Q oh button. My. A meal throws out. The self-destructs, not quite a gigantic combo, but they still managed to secure three kills. They're going to secure the point as well. This time bank is massive. Five minutes and 40 seconds, plus they don't even need to cap parry. Yeah, you can see that box of victory there right underneath Spectral's feet. is trying to claim all of that space. Going to get a little bit of a feed onto that shield. We'll give, be given the disc, but obviously now it's time to get out of dodge for Spectral. Oh no! Lost this in the back line. The shadow perfect. One down. Perfect reactions from JK LOL. And now Lost goes extraordinarily low. Has to back off. Has to receive the beat in order to survive the fight. They lay out the support That's stacked. Ops. Not something we usually want to see. The grab from Spectral to try and stop all that damage coming through. But That's a big boop on Sir Maus. Maus and Spectral go down regardless. JK Low is also going to fall. Angry Titan's not out of this fight just yet. And what's more, George, they're still gaining space, even if Shoes Money Crew... Oh, no, oh, another what? boop! That's got two now! <laughs> oh, those are fat boops. Oh, dear. And he's going to get so much ult charge for that, too. Look, 50% towards another sound barrier. Couple of meters away. Spectral's return now on that Soldier 76. Wanted to sprint back and lay down that long Gustaf range damage. Dead. Hold up, what happened? Gustav ends up going down. They managed to kill Spectral okay, so kind of a one for one trade. Not so much healing now available for Shoes Money Crew. Gustav's going to come back rather quickly though. Yeah, this could be Angry Titans just backing out right here. Spectral's going to swap on back to Vizaya. But don't need to panic, Jaws. They've still got four minutes and 30 seconds. That's a oh, big slam. Though. That is a big slam in the front line. They actually boofed the Reinhardt as well. He got right up into his face. A Graviton Surge can't be mixed that bomb. Self Destruct gets thrown in. He finds How does he two do it? kills. There we go, that's what we wanted to see. Lolsish now just decimating the back line with the help of Erky and now AT a 0.8 meters away from getting themselves match points. They find the gold box of victory and AT now 2-0 up in the series. Emil and Fat. Let's not forget these guys are the newbies on this roster. They've they've probably been in the team house for like a week now. They replaced Luddy and Elivo in these roles. And in this final little stretch of King's Row, we saw Fat get two boops and then combine with Loltish for a boop upwards into Shatter. And then we saw Ramil get so many great bombs as well. They're definitely making themselves staples of Angry Titans and showing why they deserve to be on this top tier roster. You saw, we, we saw like the perfect, perfect angle for that Lucio too, because you saw him get right up it was like, on the face. Hey. Right behind the shield, he booped upwards and then the shatter instantly hit down. This is what we knew them for previously with um, with Brigitte when she could stun, of course, through shields. Angry Titan is just so good at layering those um, abilities together. Yeah, especially in EU, we had quite a few of those people who were great at like timing that. We had Leaf, of course, and Kib, who went over to Guangzhou Charge, and he seems to be doing very well for them at the moment. But one of the things that seems to consistently be happening as well is that Lolsish is getting great charge throughs on these Graviton Surges. Seems like he's always got the right angle to not pick out someone who is not going to be a valuable charge. We rarely see him charge out transcendings and yards, which can often be a problem for many Reinhardts who aren't prepared to follow up those combinations. It really did seem like Shu's game plan coming into the start of the series was we want to overwhelm Lolsish. We saw what Kosti managed to do to them, bring them to all the way to five games by playing so aggro and up in Lolsish's face. Maybe it was a bit of an off day for Angry Titans. They weren't really be able, to, uh, they weren't able to react to that aggression. But right now, it seems like they're reacting rather accordingly. They're waiting for J.K. Lowe in some instances. It's like he's reading like a book. This David versus Goliath moment is swinging way in favor of the Goliath of Lolsish. Well, I think right now if you're trying to read a book it's more of like a collection of short stories because currently there's not one really one tone for angry titans like we've seen how aggressive they can get with fat just straight up Wing everyone forward of speed boost, which a lot of people would consider a more rudimentary form of aggression that's kind of been phased out over the course of 3-3 because people have had a better idea of how to deal with it. But when you when you bring out like once in a blue moon for that kind of surprise aggression, you can very easily overwhelm an enemy team. That's exactly what happened on Streets Phase Two Shoes Money Crew. It's very easy to do that in Silica. You just go E. I guess we'll just double you. Speed boost.
with the team and then hopefully run down the Reinhardt. You just Discord them and it's pretty much easy game from there. Lulz has had some insane yeah, shatters. The and it, every single week we've seen Angry Titans kind of perform at their mind. There's always one standout player every single season that is, of course. Emil also just coming in and going, hey, I can play D.Va. Very, very well as well. Not only is he finding solo bombs, and every single D.Va player in EU, we've had people like RCK, just famously with his RCK bomb in Giganti of, uh, of Giganti of old, in fact, just be phenomenal at like, placing the D.Va bomb places that either um, makes the enemy team react in, in according... It makes the team react in a way that they want to like back off and just make sure they can stop the diva bomb from hitting the main tank or they try and just force the enemy forward and say hey come into us because there's a diva bomb behind you and then they can instantly capitalize on those scenarios yeah and when it comes to me a little bit of history as well when he used to play for all swedish team vivi's adventure he also had a pretty mean dps he was a pretty good hit scan his soldier 76 pretty good in the early eu scene for his like gosu weeklies and stuff so maybe he can bring that out in a quad dps kind of uh, scenario yeah we haven't actually seen that just yet but we could be seeing it in the next map we'll have to wait and see of course we're going to jump to a quick break guys don't go anywhere